Um, welcome, everybody. Um, we, we're, we're all here tonight to talk about uh, homelessness, uh, housing, affordable housing. Um, my name is Dan Toll, and I'm, I'm the head of a um, consulting firm, Parker Advisors. We specialize in mental health, um, substance use, homelessness, and the intersection of law enforcement and mental health. And I was hired by the city of Montpelier through the Montpelier Task Force to do a project to assess homelessness in Washington County and put together recommendations, short, medium, and long term. Mm -hmm. And the medium and long term issues will involve, of course, um, housing issues. Mm -hmm. So it's affordable housing and all the issues that, that you know we as a state are grappling with relating to you know elders downsizing and. Uh, my son, who's 30, trying to buy a house in Burlington, that sort of thing. Um, so what we, uh, you have an agenda in front of you. We're, I, we put together this agenda just to establish some structure on the outset, but we're not going to be rigid, uh, particularly since we don't have a, a big room. You know, the, the more people we have, the more structure is needed. So um, I think we're going to be a little more, you know, flexible. Um, so... In terms of the ground rules, um, clearly, you know, we're here to talk about it, subjects that could could be controversial. So, and people may have differing views. So, please, um, let's all um, operate from a, a place of, of caring and respect for each other. Um, if you have, you know, feel free to get up. Please eat, <laughs> get food, uh, the bathroom, whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. Please do so. Um, my email is up here, so uh, please, if you have other thoughts or ideas, or you want to pass that on to, to any of your friends, colleagues, your kids, your parents, your whatever, um, I'm all ears in terms of getting more feedback afterwards. Um, meetings being recorded, obviously. <laughs> By Orca, this is a public meeting, so um, everything will be on the public record. Um, so just want everyone to be aware of that. Hey, and beyond that, did, did I miss anything in terms of the upfront logistics? Uh, you can think of no. No. Okay. Well, let's. Good. Let's dive right in. We're going to do so for introductions. Um, name and where you're from. I think, yeah, where you're from, and then uh, um, you can either either tell the room, you know, what you do for work or something you're uh, very passionate about, or you can pass and say absolutely nothing. Just just name in town, uh, and and then. Once we do the introduction, we'll start with open-ended questions, and depending on how that flow goes, we have some you know specific questions that we can do at the end, and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap up by 7:30. So, can I, I have one of those pieces? Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm also gonna just take notes on the back of it too. Do you need something to write with? Um, yeah, I'll grab a pen over there. Okay. Sorry. I have a spare. If someone needs one. I think I do too. So, um, why don't you start off? the introductions? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Uh, hello. I know some of you, but not all of you. My name is Laura. Um, I'm just signing on with Dan here to help out with this past couple days, so I'm new to this project. Um, but I've done a lot with the city of Montpelier over the past five, six years in different groups. And I'm from Montpelier. I live on Liberty Street. And something I'm passionate about, I love bicycles. So I'm over at Free Ride quite a bit, the community bike shop. Hi everybody, I'm Andrea Stander. Um, I live here in Montpelier. I also live on Liberty Street. We're not quite neighbors, but close. Um, and I am experimenting with being retired after a long career as a nonprofit uh, executive director and community organizer. Nonprofit executive director, community organizer. I ran rural Vermont for quite a few years and have worked with other nonprofits in the city. Um, and I think the thing I'm passionate about is staying in Montpelier. 
which I'm beginning to think is not going to be possible. Montpelier is the first community, I moved a lot in my life, starting from when I was a little kid. Yeah. And Montpelier is the first community that I've lived in long enough to really develop a community and have relationships and, and all these contacts and stuff. Yeah. But now that I'm trying out retirement, I'm mm. really not sure that that then I'm going to be able to stay here. Yeah, um, yeah. that's going to be an issue for yeah, a lot of us. It is for a lot of people. Yeah. And so it also has made me think a lot about, I'm also involved in climate work. Uh, yep. I have been on the board of 350 Vermont, and I'm very concerned about right. the impacts of the climate crisis as they intersect yep. with housing and homelessness yep. and all of that stuff. Which, so which, those are all things yeah. that I'm thinking about. Big issue. Great. Yep. And next, next. Uh, my name is Gerard Renfro. I live right here in Montpelier downtown. Ger you said uh, Gerard? Gerard yeah. Renfro. Yep. I, I should have mentioned at the outset, I have tinnitus and hearing loss, mm -hmm. which is, makes it tough to be a facilitator. Mm -hmm. but, yep. So, yeah, mm -hmm. just so you know, if I keep saying yeah. what. Um, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to remember to speak louder. So no, that's okay. It's Gerard Renfro. Gerard. I live here in Montpelier. Uh, I work at the Hunger Mountain Co-op, and uh, that's really all I have to say. Uh, I'm Deb Glotman. I uh, live in East Montpelier, and uh, I run the Mitzvah Fund, which is a veterinary nonprofit, and um, we service uh, unhoused uh, lo local uh, low-income seniors, veterans, and uh, disabled first responders. So we're all about this population and what it needs. Yeah. I was just emailing you this morning. Oh, I'm Jess. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, thank you very much. Hi. We should have. I know. <laughs> what a hard name. Jessica's one of the most, if not the most awesome dog walker in the world. That's she awesome. walks my dog. Yeah. Nobody can walk my dog unless they're awesome. So oh, like, <laughs> awesome. Well done. Amongst her many talents. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> my name is Jessica. Um, I am a renter in Montpelier. I'm a parent. Um, I'm a solo parent of a middle schooler. And I'm also a part of the newly uh, housing committee that the city has been uh, putting together. So Thank you for stepping cool. up to do that. Yeah. <laughs> We're very lucky to have Jessica uh, here. Jess, your last name is? Oprowski. It's O-P-A-R-O-W-S-K-I. Okay. I should have mentioned that I'm a renter, too. Yeah. I, I'm not a homeowner. Me, too. <laughs> should have said that, yeah. Renter. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Great. 25 years ago, I bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> when you could. Yeah, when, 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 when you could. When it was possible. Yeah. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, but before we do that, um, those of you who are tend to like to talk, be mindful. Those of you who don't tend to talk as much, we'd love to hear your input, and I may call on you at times, and feel free to pass. But we, we like to encourage feedback and ideas from everybody. So, um, so... We're basically going to talk about the two issues, the homelessness and the housing, and start with the, with the homelessness issue. And I guess to kick it off, just to get the, the conversation going, um, from your perspective as a resident, maybe as a business owner, um, whatever hat you want to wear or um, represent, what do you think is working in terms of how we're dealing with homelessness in Montpelier as well as broader Washington County. Thoughts? I mean, I feel a little ashamed to say it, but I, I, I don't know enough. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something that's not working is that I don't know enough. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed about at all. Um, most people, I think, are not sort of really plugged in to what's going on. I mean, I know that I, I see people in town um, walking a lot of the trail systems and stuff. I see tents. I see people out there. Yep. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't know enough about it. Yeah. So it hasn't been a big issue for you? Uh, personally, no. I guess, uh, no. Yep. Um, Anybody else? What, Andrew, what do you? I was just going to say that I think what has changed in my experience in the time I've lived here is that there's more conversation going on now. More people are talking about it. More um, organized steps are being taken 
to try to come up with solutions. Um, I certainly have seen the need increase over the last decade, um, and particularly in the last few years. Um, I volunteer with the Mitzvah Fund, so I've had a little more opportunity recently to get to know a few people who are in that marginalized, marginally housed population. Um, and I think the big re revelation for me was when I decided to try out retirement, as I started to realize how close I am, mm. yeah. how, how easy it would be for me to become homeless. Right. Yeah. In the current economic climate, real estate climate, and all of that. And that's just made me really think about it in a different way. It's just how easy is it that it can happen to people. We've been talking one-on-one um, -on -one to some of the folks here there who, who are living outside, and it's kind of amazing some of the backgrounds, mm -hmm. these people, um, yeah. the things that they have done in their life. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, now they're at a space that mm -hmm. yeah, they're having to deal with not, not having a roof over their heads. Yeah. Gerard, what are your thoughts? Um, well, okay, so the question of what's working, uh, I can't answer that. Um, I would actually, I'm actually here because um, being, I've lived in Montpelier for over 20 years now, and I'm more interested in what seems to me as what's not working. Mm -hmm. yep. Or the fact that this problem has been developing, and I'll just call it uh, an issue of poverty. Uh, it's been going on for decades, and it's been... I think certain things are financial issues and others uh, are encroaching on the city just as they are in the rest of the country. And, and when you say financial issues? Um, p poverty, uh, like, well, just for one example, and again this is all very personal experience, I don't have any, any data. Yeah. Um, but like when I was volunteering for one of the, the um, food kitchens, I asked the people back there, because these kind of questions are always on my mind, like uh, what was it like? 10 years before when I was working there. And they said, oh, about half the number of people would show up at the food kitchens. And I said, so in the last 10 years, the numbers have doubled. And that was kind of around the 2008 time period. So, you know, that's one of those things. And then I look at, um, and then I see prices going up. And this is, you know, before the, um, I think it was even before COVID, but after COVID, somehow the, the bailouts seem to have passed a lot of money to certain people's hands and they've used that in ways that I think are really kind of degenerate and now we mm -hmm. have a high apartment rent and I don't want to go into too much detail now because I do have a, a kind of list of things that have been bothering me over the years and I'll talk, talk about that later but to me it's um, I can't speak to what's going well I can only speak to what's yep. been going very badly yeah and it's a lot of things so yeah. and I'll, I'll hold off on that and, until we have a more open okay and, uh, forum. And the thing the, the issues that, that you want to talk about do they relate specifically to homeless or, or the also uh, I, and or the broader issue of housing affordable housing um, I would say Montpelier's problems that relate to the price of property which then affects housing which right. I can't really speak to about right. and apartment rents prices as well okay. which I can't speak about okay so we'll come to that okay. once we um, conclude the, our discussion around the, the homelessness issue and my plan is being here is to, is to also listen in and report back to the rest of the committee about the, the housing issues and concerns so I'm I, I ran out of the house, so I might have to steal more paper at some point, but... <laughs> I've got plenty of paper. Good, and, and good. Got, so, yeah. I've, I've got at least... I'm taking notes so we can share Cool, yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I agree with Gerard. There's, there's a lot not working um, to the very bare-bone basics, and mm -hmm. one is... Uh, there is not a public restroom in this entire city after 10 p.m. And I think we're putting too much on the very few businesses that are still open at that time, and they're too far away. Um, so like, if for 12 or 15 years, this public restroom discussion has been happening and yep. nothing has happened, um, I'm, I'm very worried that, you know, I. That's the main reason why I'm here is you, because I saw what you do and I was like, all right, this guy's got, you know, this, 
I, I'm very impressed and happy that they hired you to, it, it seems like this is different. There isn't just going to be a bunch of talk that hopefully. Yeah. Well, that's part of the pitch that we made to both the task force and city council is we're not here to do just to do another study and put right. it in the shelf. Our focus is to do the out stakeholder outreach and the, the research, but really focus on what are the immediate, short, mid-term and long-term solutions. Yeah. So, um, I, I would just like to articulate one immediate goal that I personally have. I don't want to see anybody die this winter in this town. I really want that to be a shared goal. We're not going to let anybody die as a result of being homeless in the weather um, with nowhere to turn or no options or no support. Um, there ought to be enough information and you know openness to people's plight that nobody freezes to death on a bench right. in a doorway yeah. or anything like that because it's already happening in other parts of the country right yeah we I was just at the homeless vigil last night and we were saying mm -hmm. names of yeah people who have died yeah so on that um, okay in the summer there was of course these people that were I guess they were mostly around the uh, picnic table in the corner just behind Shaw's. Mm -hmm. And I also understand that just recently, some uh, one of the churches or something, uh, this is something in the bridge, mm -hmm. has just opened a, an emergency winter shelter. Yep. Do you know if those people are taken care of? Well, they have 10 beds. 10 beds. They, and and it's only 10, only which, 10. Is, which I read that and I thought, okay, that's good. And then I, count, I heard the number 10 and I thought, is that enough? And I'm just wondering Not if Not when there's 400 people no. who are well, unhoused. In town? Not in town, in but town, in, but in, 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 in Washington County. Yeah. Washington yeah. okay. County. 450. 400, 450, mm -hmm. yeah. The, wow. I mean, well, and that number is, you know. Well, 450 yeah. is um, mm -hmm. the unsheltered, mm -hmm. unhoused. Yeah. And, and But the most of those people are the housing insecure mm -hmm. people that are, are in the hotels yeah. that are getting um, you know the, the special the subsidies. Yeah. Yeah. It's the there's about 80. The last we did a count a couple months ago of mm -hmm. of the unsheltered people are outside in yeah. Barry Berlin and Montpelier, which mm -hmm. is where the concert is about. Yeah. It's over 75. Yeah, it was between 75 so and 80. 75 people yeah. don't have in the, so in the, the vast immediate area mm -hmm. or the. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, and I think Samaritan's total capacity is 30. Am I right about 30, that? 30, 35 yeah. Yeah. between yeah. The, yeah. the old place and the new place? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have a question. And you sure. might have to just tell me, I, I might be one of those over talkers, so you might have to just tell me at times to stop. I can, you're close <laughs> you enough, can I can kick, kick okay, you. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, but don't kick my dog. I will. I will. <laughs> so I've got a question and a comment. Um, one of my questions is, is that I know that some, maybe some, um, maybe all what is and ex, and the church this shelter is does everybody have to be sober like are people being turned away that aren't clean aren't sober um what what's that like uh that's a great question but i i don't think that they get that personal I think right that so it's just about so like that's the thing is like I if somebody is drunk if somebody's there, under the there influence. are rules. Are they kicked out? Like, how does this? There, there are rules that they have to sign. That mm -hmm. they understand that they get. It is a privilege to stay, and it is a privilege to have one of those cots. So, um, and these these people know cold. So right. they're unless there's a true mental health disaster, um, they are behaving. Right. Um, at least that's what Rick D'Angelis and I discuss because. You know, um, they're, they have a lot of volunteers, they have a lot of employees that are there by themselves. Um, so we, you know, we discuss this a lot because we're all women at the Mitzvah Fund and we're all older and, you know, they want to make sure that we're safe. And, um, but same kind of same thing goes, you know, for the shelter because there's, you know, it's not like they have a bouncer. Um, so there are rules, and the same thing goes for the Good Samaritan Haven. You know, they have a contract that they all have to, you know, sign and abide by. And then, yes, if they uh, scare anyone, if they, you know, if the police have to be caught, like, it, you're done. Um, but those are interpersonal rules, not what you did before you got to the shelter rules. That's, that's which, correct. So as long as you behave, it doesn't matter what your state of that's mind correct. is in. Yeah. Right. Which is, yeah. 
seems it's the fair thing. It's, yes. a, it's a behavior yeah. focus yes. rather than a yeah. yes. history. There's history no judging or, yeah. of yeah. what got you there. Yeah. And then just some of my comments and, and I guess like my interactions or my kind of how it affects me a little bit more is um, thinking about um, the Girton Park that was removed, that shelter, and how everybody's shifted back to the bus terminal, the, right in front of Shaw's, and how it's not usable for people that need to get on the bus or want to get on the bus. Yeah. Um, and then thinking about, as a parent, um, I've been, I was thinking about letting my son ride the bus up to Williston this summer for a summer camp. Do I want him to sit at that bus terminal? Like, not really. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what's going to go on. I don't. I don't feel comfortable with it. I'm trying to not judge the people that are there, but I also drive by at nine in the morning and I see the beer cans in their hands, mm -hmm. and it's not something that I want my kid to be around. That's where the transit center is better because right. they do have people there, but not from 11:30 to two. <laughs> yeah. And, and you also can't use the bathroom from 11:30 right. to two, which is. That's a public restaurant. Well, I just saw an article on the bridge tonight that there's some more money going into staffing. Oh, great. But I don't, and some extension of hours. I don't know what it means. We're, we're talking about the bus stop? The, the transit, center. transit center. The transit center over on Taylor Street. So you're going you know, to the parking building house. is, and um, down below is the, the bus terminal. Behind Capitol Plaza? Behind Capitol it used to be just an empty parking lot. And they oh, oh, yeah, that yeah where the farmers market, that area, yes. the, the multi-story building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a the, that's the bottom of it is a, is a well, it's a it's a bus station. Yeah, all the buses go yeah. through there. Right, right, and right. it okay. has a big waiting area. Um, and that's where you yeah. guys are parked now, right? We yeah. we yeah. park there on Fridays, yeah. um, which it, and at no charge, and they're very very kind to us, um, and. Uh, they are providing a service because there's a lot of people staying warm in there. Mm -hmm. And they are a warming shelter from six to nine. So it's inside. Now. Now they are. It's, it's inside the place where you would, whatever that So there is a bathroom is. there? Okay. Yeah. There is. It's key. You know, it's Two key. bathrooms. It's electronically controlled. Yeah. Yeah. So there it has to be in the office to let uh, people yeah. in and out. They restrict use mm -hmm. during parts of, of the yeah. day. So, yeah. yeah. Um, this bathroom, public bathroom issue continues to be something that yes. we need to well, and that's the other part of my, my comments and stuff, too, is, is that I think we do need a public bathroom downtown. Uh -oh. um, at least one. At least one. Again, as a parent and having a kid and his friends around town, is that what's going to go on in that bathroom? Are there going to be people that are kind of just sheltering in there? Is there going to be drug use in there? Is it going to be kept clean? Yep. Um, that's part that's those are all the hurdles yeah I mean and that's the thing is would I rather my son go to somebody's store and say hey can I please use the bathroom instead of going to a public space um, but, but that's the kind of thing that can be um, volunteered out you know you could have someone there doing it like on off hours you know I mean, something that that seems like one of the easier fixes. Not that I know what I'm talking about. It just seems like a bathroom versus an entire apartment building of right. emergency shelters right. ought to be one of the easier things to fix. And um, it's funny you should talk about that because um, I have two apartment mates, and sometimes, and again, I live right downtown. Uh, sometimes there's someone in the bathroom, and I have at times had to go outside to another store that was still open late at night and ask them. So I, I, I totally get that, even though, of course, the, the need for the people who are homeless is much more mm -hmm. important but I, I it's just I don't know I guess maybe it's to me it's just humorous if we're talking about this because it's like mm -hmm. that does seem like a no-brainer but again just the, we haven't had anything in decades the management of public space even in a small city that people care about each other is still yes yeah, complicated and things, difficult yeah a couple and things when you say there. management of public space uh, say a little by, bit more by management I mean like my family runs sh uh, shopping centers, and um, it's nobody recognizes that. Hey, did anybody notice that at nine o'clock the lights didn't go on? You know, like who, who do you call at nine o'clock at night when the lights don't go on? So now it's a public space, but people are going into it and it's pitch black. Is that safe? So there's 
man, you know, there has to be like, is there anything, if there's anything wrong with this, call dispatch, call, you know, oh, right, wh right. whatever. But all of those things are management. What happens if the toilet gets plugged? Yeah, right. You know, and now, oh, we have a bathroom, but you, you know, if you use it, it's going to make the problem worse. Right, so, right. So somebody has to be on call for something like that. And can it be public works? Great. One more doc, one more thing on their docket. Right. Um, so, so all those things cost money. All those things cause issues. And then if you put cameras in the space, which honestly, that's the way the world, um, it lets somebody like the city manager or somebody, you know, check on stuff or have record of stuff. But it costs money to manage those. It costs money to, you yeah. know. So everything... It's not for not that we're still discussing the bathrooms. <laughs> it's just a perfect, it's like the perfect metaphor and example of why we are where we are, because yeah. nothing is easy. Yeah. Can there, I there's, also? There's so many intersecting uh, yes. factors and issues. I feel like that's a perfect point to just say it's seven o'clock. Yep. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just to keep us on yeah. track, if you want to move it forward in yeah, any way. Um, um, well, first of all, and we have up. a, a yes. new participant or guest. You want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Carolyn Ridpath. I'm on both the bathroom committee and the yeah. task force. <laughs> so do you want to Hi, ben. talk about the, provide a little information about the bathroom issue? You don't have to <laughs> now. <laughs> that committee you don't have to put a target met. on your back. I've never met. So it's so. a new committee? No, it's an old committee. Oh. It has two people oh. and it was chaired by a, a council member and it never had a meeting. Mm -hmm. And so it got reconstituted, and so at the last council meeting, they put on a number of more uh, extra people. Um, so uh, with a little bit of nagging, uh, I think they'll move forward. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the women is a former director for the senior center. Mm -hmm. One of the women, people know Mary Alice Bis mm -hmm. Bisbee. Um, Zach is an outreach worker for uh, Washington County Mental Health and mm -hmm. Disabled, so he brings that perspective. Yeah. And then the others I don't know. Yeah. And Which, Zach is also on the Homelessness Task Force. Is there a cost for these bathrooms? Like, has, has somebody come up with that number? No. no. Well, yeah, one thing that was Not occurring that to me is we're talking about it as if it exists right. and how we would manage it. Right. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yes, right. absolutely. And, and creating it, you know, it, even if, even if it was a freestanding structure of some sort, right. you know, in a good place, right. location, and which house. would be, <laughs> I can't even imagine what the siting issues around that might be. Oh my yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, building anything like that, you know, water, sewer, you know, lights, the, you know, heat, all those things would have to be figured out. Yeah. I, I think there's there's more potential to in the short term to solve that problem, to do some serious outreach to the people who have control of the existing bathrooms yeah. downtown and figure out a way to make them more available. Right. Well, and city mm -hmm. center was available. Yes. And for the last, I forget, it was a few years ago that those became locked. Right. And yeah. the, the police yeah. station used to be a... Uh, an option. A space right. that people really right. use. Is that, that a 9 11 thing? Or? What? Is that a 9 11 thing or a post? Is well, what? It's the the, the locking up of, the, of these oh, places the, that used to be the open. The city center? No, I think it's because um, when Village Pizza moved out of there, it, it just it lacked enough people in there yeah. Yeah. so that oh, it became okay. unsafe yeah. um, because there weren't businesses open. Oh, okay. Um, I see. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. This well, and topic. also, also COVID, I think, right. yes. had an impact well, too. Had, a lot yeah. of things got closed yeah, because everybody. of COVID and never got open. Yeah, again. I mean, yes. I, I think the point about the bathrooms being a microcosm is is, is a yeah. good one. It's it's a it's a, <laughs> a representative of all the complexity. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, that's really going to be unfortunate. Is that there's so many. Are you, you going to kick me? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there's so many. You want me to kick you? Um, <laughs> people that are going to push back on all of this mm -hmm. oh, they're going to yeah. push back on on it all like we couldn't like look at look at the park look at the the structure there that was an eyesore yeah so there's enough people that complained or mm -hmm. maybe just the enough few people the right people that complained so it was moved 
So to get a bathroom, the second that there's an overdose in there, like, yeah, the, everybody's going to, there's going to be too many people that are just going to be like, no way, yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. If it comes to something that's going to be a vote to put on a budget, whatever, yeah. I, it's unfortunate, yeah. but I feel like that's what's going to yeah. be shut down. Yeah. And so that's the thing is, is like, and this is what we talk about a little bit in the housing committee sometimes too, is, is how do we reach out to people to either, A, there, we get in so many people in town that are like, oh, I never heard about this. I never heard that that was gonna happen. I never heard that this. So how do we get more people informed? How do we get more people involved in decision making or ideas or whatever? I mean, there's only how many of us mm -hmm. here? Yeah. How many people were earlier today? Total of nine, including yeah. all of us here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and me. Well, that's. <laughs> yeah, and you were there. Yeah. So, so it doubled the yeah. thing. Double so, thing. So, <laughs> so, Carolyn, now you have some some good feedback you can take once the, once the bathroom clinic gets going. So now let's shift yep. gears from, from homeless to the housing issue, and I want to start by taking a little poll. Um, first of all, uh, very just informally, how many folks in this room feel that the country club pop property should at least in part be used for affordable and other housing? Hands down. What, what, is, what is country club property? The, the Elks Club property yeah, out, that the city bought? Out by um, out Agway, up, you go out to the radio unit. The, the old, the, radio the golf radio course station up there, up on that yes. hill there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. it's the, yes. you know, the golf course. Yeah. Up on the it's hill. It's actually terrible at geography around here. <laughs> <laughs> I live a very sheltered life. When yeah. people say Taylor Street or okay. whatever, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I'm the wrong you're, person. You're perfectly. But, but I know, okay. I think I know the area. It's, it's where, where the, the golf WNCS it's where the golf repeater. Club. Repeater. Right, and it's repeater where the golf station. club used to be. It's a giant okay. little hill yeah. there. And there's a yeah. hill. Okay. Yeah. I know the general area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're welcome to abstain. Yeah. Not, not exactly well, in Montpelier. I will vote yes, except with the caveat. That there would have to be an accompanying public transit right. system, yeah, yeah. because it's, out because it's yeah. too far out of town yeah. right. yep. to be feasible for school kids, for elderly, for people without cars. Right. You know, right. we you don't know. need to create another satellite concentration of traffic. Right. You know, yeah. you know. again, the complexities <laughs> yeah. Yeah. of any. Given, but I, given. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would say it's not a good place for housing, unless. Yep. It is accompanied by a public transit program. Yep. Absolutely. So the second question is. I was going to tell them a little bit about oh, the, the, the project because we're going to be getting more in, into that in the next couple of months as well. Um, so it's 140 acres or so. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a consulting firm that has been working on gathering information from the community, from the site itself, the physical everything, the stone, the ev whatever's right. going on there, they're gonna come back with like multiple proposals of like, this is just a visual thing. Of, this is what we could do. What, and, and they're kind of trying to gather information right now of what do we want to see there? Do we wanna see affordable housing? Do we wanna see um, more efficient, like single family homes? Do we wanna see more uh, multi-unit kind of things? Do we wanna see, a restaurant do we want to see uh, a rec department those kind of things they're trying to get that information yeah. and go from there there's been a few sessions um, where the public input could could happen there um, and it was a good turnout but it's still just information gathering right now and I think that the plan is is that in March maybe they're gonna have the next phase of their project of like kind of the proposals yeah. Huh. Yeah. so Thank you. For so that. are those sessions still going on? Is the uh, input sessions done? Um, they did. I think they, they, they did three of them, right? Yes. And they, those are completed, but uh, I'm not sure what. There will be for more more information yeah. sessions and everything to come. Yeah. But yeah, at this point, yeah, that's kind of stopped, and then we'll we'll get more information. The next housing committee meeting too. I think that we'll have a little bit more information on like what's going to go and what our involvement is in how we can support that firm as well. Yeah. So a related topic is, uh, again, a little straw poll here. How many folks feel the same housing, affordable housing, for Vermont College of Fine Arts? 
Oh, that's even better. That has more potential. <laughs> yeah, but try to sell that Media, to folks on College Street. I mean, I, I, well, <laughs> that, that's yeah. exactly. I mean, I'm not going to mince their, words here, but are they they're moving the whole. Well, 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 wait a minute. Time. Go, yeah. go ahead. I, I can't mince mince no words. Yeah. No, no, he just asked me a question. Yeah. It's um, yeah, it's sorry. it's very, um, well, a couple things. One is. I brought this up with our veterinarian. I said, you know, it would just be perfect. It has dormitory kind of things. There's bathrooms in place. The septic is there. Everything is there. It's not in the floodplain. It's not in the floodplain. <laughs> There's, um, you know, it's it's not isolating, you know, because a lot of these low in income and affordable housing spaces, like Andrea said, yeah. are in the middle of nowhere. And yes, they might have limited transportation back and forth you know, especially during work hours. But at the end of the day, a lot of these people are still trying to figure out how to get home after the movie theater or, you know, if they get to do that. Yeah. But it's it, it's just getting the farmer's market folk to understand that the folks that don't go to the farmer's market because they can't afford to go to the farmer's market need a place to live. And are they going to be okay with them living next door? And I... I don't think so, as much as I would like it to be. So you, you, um, you, you're saying you think that the, the neighborhood pressure That neighborhood is so. going to, I mean, yeah. they bring in some serious tax dollars, and a lot of them are on committees. I, you know, I just don't well, see that happening. I, I've been living in that neighborhood for five years now, and yeah, there's a lot of strong feelings. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's not, that's not a reason not to... Yeah, so it, I heard somebody say, well, then why not just put a jail there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just we need it. So is that college selling its property? Is it moving out? It what? has moved out. It, it's only part of it is. So okay. they're selling off so some of the buildings, the dormitory areas. They're keeping okay. some of it. They are kind of shifting some of the schooling to Colorado. Um, so there's a number of buildings that are going to, to yep. be potentially empty there. One thing is is that, from what I remember reading, is that there was a, an interview with Rick and they talked about the $20,000 or so that was spent to assess that building, which seems like an, a significant amount of money to mm -hmm. go towards an assessment to be like, this is not actually suitable. There's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of work that needs to go into that yeah. building. Yeah. Like millions of dollars yeah. to make that handicap accessible up to probably somewhat totally. of codes mm -hmm. so that that space like who knows what's going to go on with that space it has to be underwritten either by like a national life or i mean it has to be underwritten by somebody with a lot of money right and my kind of thought with it is because i want to see more younger families be able to live in town to be able to move into town mm -hmm. to purchase houses there's a lot of older people that are living in large houses yes. that need to not be living in those large houses. Mm -hmm. So if we could make turn that area, that campus area, into an affordable elderly kind of community mm -hmm. because it's flat, because it's got the green space, and because it's got dorm areas, yeah, it could be, there could also be a, that gym area could be a great community space. Mm -hmm. yep. But make it affordable so that there's people that can either rent, there's people that could buy a condo, whatnot, but they need to be getting out of these large houses so that families can come yeah, here. Great. Because mm -hmm. we're not going to, that's the thing is that the, none of this, we're not going to be have solutions if there's just these massive houses with one person living in it. And if, they want to move out. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, I know three people. Who, one of them is waiting to get into a house because the owner is on a wait list to get into another spring. <laughs> and this has been going on for three years now. Yeah. I think she's probably pretty yeah. far up on the wait list. Yeah. Another friend of mine warned me at the beginning of summer she wouldn't be coming back with my partner. She, she's been doing this every year for yeah. years. I mean, she it's, wants to get out. It's, um, just it's, a sec. Yeah. Um, Jura, I, I don't want to run out of time. You, I know you came with some issues, and I, yes. I'd like to yeah, give you some space. To, to I understand we only have 15 minutes. Um, but it, we're it, very interested in okay. whatever you well, want to present. So I'm just going to say straight off. Sure. Uh, yep. I did come here with a chip on my shoulder. There's a lot of things that have been pissing me off for a long time, um, and I didn't know anything about the people in this committee or what you're working on. It, it, 
I don't have the chip on my shoulder anymore, just to let you know. But <laughs> I did come here like, Lasted. yeah, right, these people are really going to try and help. So this is the, the this is all negative. This is the stuff that I've been thinking about and I wanted to raise. So I'm just going to, um, this is very encapsulated. I'm not going to go into detail, but okay, so long time ago, my understanding when, when, when Necky moved in, brought a lot of wealthy students with them. So landlords started raising the rent because they knew that they could get prices from the Necky students, but that cranked up the rent everywhere. Um, and again, I'm talking about rent, not necessarily home ownership. Right. Uh, there's the upper class, the government nonprofit sec sector that's buying a property, has been here for a long time. They don't pay taxes on that property, but their purchase of those properties is causing the value, the cost of housing to go up. Uh, I, I know in the past there has been a landlord who uh, was known to demand part of the business profits from a business that moved into downtown after they'd been there for a year or two, so they get settled in, and he would say, well, now that you settled in, you owe me a piece of the action, not just rent, but a piece of their business. Yep. And of course, the business would then move, and it would be vacated. And I also understand that there were landlords that were purposely overcharging for their space, and then when it's empty, they take it as a tax write-off, which seems like fraud. I once checked that into that a long time ago, and I got nowhere with it because no one knew how to, to check and do uh, business people's uh, taxes, I, I, you know, confidential information and all that. But I do remember looking into that. Um, currently, and this is again, this is like the post-COVID thing. So I don't know, maybe a bunch of people end up with a lot of spare cash. But so there's been rent management groups that have been taking control of apartments. They don't own the apartments, but they take control over it. And then they charge really large fees for first timers to come in. Uh, when those first timers don't have any references, which is making yep. things very difficult. Yeah. Pilot taxes. This has been going on. What, what kind of taxes? Pilot. P I L O T. Payment, payment, payment. In lieu of, of tax. Exactly. Oh, right, right. So, yep. and this goes back to the nonprofits and all that. You have all these businesses that are nonprofits, government, et cetera. Um, they do not pay taxes on their, for their business. So basically, they are. Being their, their their lack of taxes are being covered by everyone else's tax base. So someone with a home or an apartment has to cover that extra cost that is being lost uh, by that occupied nonprofit. Um, and I understand there's the question of the Airbnbs and wealthy. And I, I do not mean this as a slander, but Airbnbs and wealthy immigrants coming in uh, to the state and to areas uh, partially because of uh, global warming and all that and they are supposedly buying up property and causing uh, the values to come up. And I realize that that has been in the bridge already, but I just, this is um, uh, something that is part of the picture. Yep. And uh, very lastly, let me see. Um, oh yeah, this is, this is something I, that kind of bugs me on a, on a state level. We have, we spend money on private prisons to keep people in prison who have probably had very minor offenses such as drug use for marijuana and all that. Marijuana is becoming legal and we still are wasting tax dollars on the cost of private prisons, which to me seems like we're basically stealing money from the, or the state is stealing money from us to pay for something that we don't even need anymore because who cares about drug use or who cares about marijuana use these days? And I just think that whole thing yeah. is like this unaddressed uh, elephant in the room that is like, this is a huge waste for the state, yep. which then comes down to what we have available as state funds. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's my spiel. Thank you for that. Those are some great insights, Drew. I really appreciate it. Andrea? Um, I, this is a thought that's been going through my head for a while, and I also know people who have big <coughs> houses who are done with them, think they want to get out of them. Um, I wonder if it would be worth considering a really organized, um, carefully uh, it, it, it would need to involve people who really know how to do this of grassroots outreach to property owners in the town people who own buildings um, whether they be apartment buildings or private homes to find out how many people first of all are thinking about this and like I, I don't want to be you know this is too much for me I don't want to deal with this anymore whatever 
that's the first thing. But when, then when also, what options would they just consider? A sec, just yeah. a second, you said dealing with this. What do you mean by this specifically? The, the responsibility of maintaining a big piece of property. Okay, of being okay. A, a land. I mean, I think there's a lot of different categories. There are yep. older people who, yep. you know, their kids are all gone and the kids don't want the house and they've got this big house. I have friends that are in exactly that situation. But there's also people who, I think, for reasons of change of life or circumstances or whatever, what they have been maintaining is just, you know, not what they want to be doing anymore. Yeah. Um, but I think it would only work if there was kind of a menu of possibilities that people could be asked about. Yep. Like if there was, you know, adequate, you know, uh, grant funding or something to help someone who owns a big house turn right. it into a duplex or yep. a triplex or whatever. Right. Or if they have property around the house that would accommodate an, access an accessory dwelling unit. Right. If there was, you know, incentives, some subsidy, you know, whatever. Wh to help which there are. there are. Well, there are, but I don't think everybody knows about right. that. Up, up to 50,000. 50, right. Yeah. But also it's the one-on-one -on -one conversation that's specific to their situation, you know, that I think might yield more information about just how many possible more immediate things you know could be done because yep. money's always the issue yeah. and I think the challenge right now is we have to figure out how to do things in the short term that are effective you know with with the resources that are available because if we keep studying things and keep doing all this stuff and we try to come up with the big number you know this is what it would take to p build housing at the country club or this is what it would take yep. to do the college over right it's gonna take too long yeah it's gonna it's take too long yeah. well that's why yeah. we're you know we the consultants yeah. are looking at yeah but at I, the I would range. I would encourage you to think about some kind of a very one-on-one -on -one kind of canvas you know, reaching out to people, making appointments, you know, putting some word out and saying, hey, yep. are you interested in talking about this? We'd yep. like to send someone to talk with you. Right. And yep. they could ask questions and they yep. could tell their story and you could get a lot of details about these different properties and what their circumstances yep. are. Great thought. We have, what, about a yep. little, little more than five minutes left and I'd like to wrap. I just thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're, you're not like looking creeping that he's not behind me, I know, so I know. <laughs> you need to kick him. I know. Yes. <laughs> I just want to reassure you that some of the things that you are talking about are things that we are talking about in the yeah. committee, and we're trying to like work on. We're trying to figure out how we can we can work on some of these things. Um, the landlords, the 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 property managers. Um, the last few minutes of our, our last meeting, the beginning of December. So we meet the first Tuesday of every month. There's our, always, public is always welcome to come. We're here. It's we, your home. Yes. We oh, might okay. not be in this space next, in January, because something else is going on, but we'll be either somewhere here. Um, it's and always posted publicly with the city website. There's always a chunk of time that is for public People of the public can come in, speak. You can sit and listen to our whole committee the whole time. And there's Zoom, right? And there is Zoom yeah, as well. Yeah, no, I, in person. I, so I don't want to do the other stuff. No. We're, <laughs> we're always, like, I think there was one woman that came one time. Dan came one time. There hasn't been too many other people from yeah. the public that are coming okay. in. So you're always welcome to come yeah, to those okay. meetings. And, to and please say right. whatever it is you yeah. need to say. We might not have answers for you, but it's yeah, good. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't it's expect to, answers. No, no, no. It's, like I said, to, it's a long, it's an ongoing thing. It's yeah. a long-term it project. It yeah. is. But I just want to let you know that okay. we are trying to work yeah. on things. They're, they're, they're on the radar screen, and there are people, Actually. good people, like just <laughs> actively working on it. And then the, I had something. So what, what, no, wait, we're running out of time. So, um, <laughs> first Tuesday the, for first after the meeting. So first, okay, first, fine. Uh, yeah. yeah. To, so to wrap up, what I'd like to do is just go around the room and just in a sentence or two. Forget about the obstacles and barriers. What's the one thing that, that you would love to see happen to address the housing issue in, in Montpelier, Washington County? Greg, why don't you start? Just one thing off the top of your head. Well, I guess the immediate thing is, is a plan about the golf course space, which now has a new name that I can't country, remember. Country Club is yeah. the country. technical. Yeah, the Country oh, okay. Club. Good. Uh, um, Laura? 
Everyone gets a chance on I this I always one. have a hard time with the one thing, to be totally <laughs> honest. I'm, still, I'm holding you to <laughs> one, though, Laura. We're running out of time, so. I know. Uh, I'm just looking You can always pass. You know? <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. Uh, I'm looking forward to more collaboration, um, even on the individual level. Mm -hmm. Like, that, I think, is really powerful. And the more stories that can be shared about yeah. the successes of that would mm -hmm. be really great. Great. Andrea, quickly. Uh, I'm going to go back to my first thing. I don't want to see anybody die this winter. Yep. I, I want things done so that people are not out save, in the cold. Save lives. Yeah. Yep. Save lives. Yeah, that's your the same as mine. Nobody thing. freeze this winter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my. Keep, that's what got me started. Keep this. people alive. Deb. Um, I, I just want to see the community work as a community. Mm -hmm. So collaboration, mm -hmm. and communication, communication, mm -hmm. and yep. coordination. Let's yep. all pull together <laughs> yep. rather than operate in our little silos. Right. Yeah. That's a great yeah. one. Um, Carolyn? I want low barrier housing. Like, you know, Did you say low barrier housing? Low barrier, yeah. Yeah. Do you like want to explain that shelters. to people, what your perception uh, is? of? Right now, you have to go through a lot of hoops to get into different kinds of shelter. Mm. Yeah. And so low barrier means that, uh, by and large, most people could access it. And so um, Pellet Shelters does some that are very economical. And now Burlington has finally taken that step to do that. So I'd like to see most vulnerable protected and have access to um, supporting services and uh, bathroom facilities and food. Yeah, great. Jess? I really want to see some tasteful, sustainable, efficient development of houses <laughs> going on. I want to see a, the Habitat for Humanity build a number of houses in here, especially the Northfield Street area. Yep. I'd love to see things go on at the Country Club, and I'd love to see things go on in the neighborhood off from Isabel Circle as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that those are the things that make smaller housing, um, all that. Yeah. And and I just wanted to I just wanted to share that when we need to encourage people with these larger houses to think about ADUs or home share. Home, home share, share program, I think, is something that needs to be talked about a yeah. lot more. Yeah. I, and that's a question that I have for you, is how much can the home share program be connected with the homeless and just start that conversation? How many people, not enough people in big houses know about home share, I guess, or are confused by it? I went through the process. I went through the interview when I was looking for housing in Montpelier. Yep. They were great. Mm -hmm. Nothing matched up, but how can we get people yeah. to, to open their homes yeah. to that? Home sharing. Because yeah. right now they have way more people looking to share a home than they have people willing to yeah. share a home. There's, a, right. there's an right. imbalance. Yeah. yeah, there's a definite imbalance. Yeah. yeah, and then there's the whole issue of infill. You know, the, 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 the spaces that we have in downtown using yeah. using them more efficiently rather than the dispersion issue. Yeah. Great. Well, um, that brings us to our to the end of our session. Um, do you have any closing comments? No, this is great. Yeah, yeah, it's a good crew. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much everybody for, for coming uh, and your input. It's been it's been really uh, helpful and, and informative, you know, getting getting all your perspective. Uh, again, uh, the, oh, here's business cards. If you okay. want to take my business card, feel free. Um, the one thing I, I would add here is that the virtual session at noontime today. The what? The the virtual session oh, at noontime today. Uh, there were two people participating from Barry, and one of the things that they emphasized, and one of the things I think is really important, yeah. is looking at, at this as a region mm -hmm. and collaboratively yeah. working on it. Yeah. Right. And I had a question because I wasn't clear on this. Have you had the opportunity to actually have this kind of conversation with any of the folks who are currently unhoused? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, so we've that's, been, that's we, been we've happening. Been, uh, my, uh, my partner, uh, Paul mm -hmm. Kapkar and I have been going out doing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, mm -hmm. We've gone to the the overnight shelter. We've been out in the woods. Um, we had a. There was a big. We had. We we sponsored three different. Um, uh, we call it homeless days of action. Right, right. Yeah. I, was, I yeah. wondered if that yeah. was. And so at those, we, the people in the hotels were, had a uh, had service providers, and, and while while they were there, we were talking to them, interviewing. So yeah, one of our biggest priorities is making sure we 
that we that we uh, uh, seek out and listen to the voices of the of the people who are unhoused, the people who are housing insecure, mm -hmm. and the frontline workers like the outreach workers. So. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, you know, there will be other opportunities for feedback down the road. Um, you all have my information. And um, so, one other thing, if you would like, you can put your email down there too. Um, there's a paper pad, paper over there, so we can like follow up directly. But if you have Dan's email, that works as well. Right. Yeah. You can email him. So, if I put my email in there, you will you be announcing? through the emails when you're going to have future meetings? Is yeah. That, okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Super. Okay. Great. Well, thank, thank you, everybody. You.